Well, welcome to another Drugs Meter Minute. Um, I'm here back in John's lab. A few months ago, um, we did a, a, a Drugs Meter Minute on what's in pills and powders, and about 20,000 people um, have watched that. And we have a few questions about, well, why don't you just do pill testing? Surely that's the best way to find out what's in your pill. So that's what we thought we'd do today. So I'll just introduce the people that we're here with today. So uh, on my right, John. I'm John Ramsey, Director of Tic Tac Communications here at St George's University of London. And I'm also here with Mike Power. Mike, tell us what you do. I'm a journalist and I specialise in the drugs trade and novel psychoactive substances. Fantastic. So, John, first question for you. Um, we got a bunch of pill testing kits that I bought the other day. My understanding is that you use these, uh, you test your drugs, they go a different colour and then you know what's in your drugs. Can you just take us through what they are, how they work? Well, the whole principle with, with drug testing, I mean, all you can do with a sort of domestic home situation is these simple colour tests. And essentially, you scrape a small amount off your tablet or take a small amount of powder, you add the reagent and you get a colour change. And that tells you something about the composition of, 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 of the product. And of course, you need different chemicals to detect different things. So we've got one here for cocaine, which will use a reagent which is normally pink and it goes blue in the presence of cocaine. We've got another reagent for ecstasy, which is marquee reagent, um, which uh, produces a dark blue colour with, with MDMA. And we've got various other tests, all of which produce colours dependent on the, com the chemicals that are in the products. Okay. Um, we were talking a little bit earlier. You, you mentioned about how much of the drug you actually need to use. Now, from a pill, how much of a pill would you actually need to use? I mean, some of these tests are very sensitive and people normally use too much. So the marquee test for MDMA only requires a very tiny amount of the tablet. If you add too much, the colour is so dark you can't see the colour, it looks black. So if you add too much, you get a dark, very dark blue which looks black. If you add just the right amount, you get a distinct blue colour. So, so the, the app, your perception of the colour depends on how much you add and how strong the tablet is. Right, and I'm assuming one person's dark blue is another person's violet is another person's black. And some people are colour blind. Lovely. Well, there we are, that's cleared that one up. And, and the other thing is, Mike and I were obviously very keen just to get hold of the pill testing kits and get hold of the drugs. Uh, and when we did that, you went, whoa, whoa, they can be dangerous. So why can these things be dangerous? Well, a lot of these contain quite aggressive chemicals. I mean, the ecstasy test, um, the marquee reagent is concentrated sulfuric acid with a small amount of formaldehyde added. So this will burn holes in your clothes, and uh, if you get it on your hands, it'll burn. It, it, it's, it's a really corrosive product. Right, so if the pill's not dangerous, the test certainly is. Absolutely. You need to be very careful about how you use it and how you dispose of it after you've used it. And, and the cocaine test, for example, contains cobalt thiocyanate, and that itself is pretty toxic as well. So, so a lot of these things are toxic chemicals. Okay, so we're going to move into like testing in just a moment, but just wondering, Mike, any questions you've got for John before we move on? When you say a tiny amount of the pill, John, I mean, that's quite a, that's quite a subjective kind of thing. What, what size, I mean, a, a tiny scraping, or a quarter of the pill, or half of the pill, or oh, what? No, no, a tiny scraping, just a small amount of powder is all you need. I mean, a, a tiny scraping, most people add far too much. Okay, and when you say that you have a, a colour change, how do you, what do you refer to? Do they come with a colour with a colour chart, or is it, do you find that online, or how, how do you users know that? Well, e each of the proprietary systems will have their own way of evaluating the tests. And we've got a colour chart here, haven't we, which shows the sort of colours these things things might produce. These are the ones from the guys in Dancefe. And of course the, the, the issue too with, with these things, if you have more than one drug in a, in, in a, a, a product, and you get the colour resulting from all the components. Absolutely. So, well, so they work very well for pure drugs, but if you get mixtures they're much more difficult to interpret. And that's been a, a major concern in recent months, hasn't it, with the, there seems to be a spate in, in users' minds certainly, a spate of deaths. Yes. And following those deaths, some toxicology reports have shown um, that the, the tablets they took contain both MDMA and PMA, and I think that that's, that's a key concern for many users currently, and probably something that we could take a look at today, no? Yes, absolutely. I mean, it's very difficult to devise a simple colour test that will deal adequately with mixtures, particularly when some drugs are much more potent than others. Absolutely. Okay. I think that's a great place to leave that. We're going to come back and answer that question whether or not you can tell an MDMA or PMA pill from these tests in our next Drugs Week to Minute. Thank you.